Good day viewers. Welcome to another edition of 30 Minutes, the interactive program of Trust Television. I'm Manir Dan Ali. My guest today is an educationist, that is someone who has been a teacher and administrator in the education sector and currently chairing the Committee on Electoral Matters in the House of Representatives. I'm talking about Hajia Aishatu Jibril Duku. Welcome to the program, Hajia. Thank you very much. I'm glad to be here. Thank you. Yeah. Um, you started out as a teacher, that is shortly after graduating from the university, mm -hmm. and then you rose to become a school principal, and then uh, come to the Federal Ministry of Education, mm -hmm. and eventually actually headed it as a political head, as the Minister of State in mm -hmm. Education. Absolutely. Um, what has been your experience? I mean, are you happy that you are no more imparting knowledge because you have now sidetracked to the legislature. <laughs> well, thank you very much for having me, uh, Manir, and um, good evening, uh, viewers. Um, well, let me start by saying, alhamdulillah, for first, you know, being in the education sector. This is a sector that, if it is by inheritance, I inherited it because my father rose from a pupil teacher to become a permanent secretary in the same Ministry of Education. And I was born to a mom who was teaching the, the, the Islamic, you know, uh, knowledge and the Quran in her own bedroom. So teaching runs so in the family. teaching runs in my blood. And uh, Manir, if there is anything that is, you know, better and more comforting as a career, is the teaching profession. I, I love the profession and I will forever continue to be proud, you know, as a teacher. Were you, okay, maybe the answer has actually been provided earlier. Yeah. I wanted to say, mm -hmm. were you, do you think you are born a teacher or circumstances made you a teacher? Both. I was born a teacher and I also trained as a teacher. So I, I am not a teacher by mistake I, and I love the job. It is not like, uh, you know, finding teaching as a stepping stone before moving on to other jobs. No, no, no. I, I love impacting knowledge. And um, come to think of it, teaching is the first profession of humanity. You know? Allah told our Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi read. And uh, yes, you couldn't have read without a teacher teaching him how to read. Mm. So I am a proud teacher because it's a noble profession. And because whatever way you look at it, you are impacting knowledge. But in spite well, of all the nobility that you are mentioning, yeah. these days not many people want to be teachers. In fact, there are jokes about people going to seek for the hands of girls in marriage. Yeah. And when they say they are teachers, they will say, no, they have, it means they have no job. Of course, it's, it's not, it didn't start now. Even while I was a principal, there was a day we were going for a first October celebration. And I put on a badge, I am proud to be a teacher. My teachers all said, Madam, please remove this badge. If they see this badge, they will not even give you a good seat. They will give you a bad seat, you know, far behind because we are teachers. They, nobody will honor us. So I realized that even in my school, I have a problem because my teachers do not want to be identified as teachers. So I had to, you know, stop going to the stadium, cancel my teachers first before, you know, and then encourage them before now they became gingered and then said, okay, then we can go. They are proud to be yes, identified as yes. teachers. So, but this actually, is a one-off because the general trend is mm. that, look, teaching is something you do when you don't have anything else to do. Certainly, that is what happens these days more especially. Uh, and that is where we are getting it wrong. And that is why we will not have the right teachers that we want in our schools. And that is one of the major problems of the education sector. We have teachers that are cheaters. You mean they are cheating the yes, pupils they or cheating. they are cheating the society? They are cheating the pupils. They are, are even cheating? cheating themselves. Because, look, you are there because you are supposed to be there and you are supposed to impact. 
onto the children, onto the society, and even onto yourself. Learning is a two-way activity. While you are teaching those children, you are also learning. And learning starts from the cradle to the grave. Look, if you think as a teacher you know everything, you're also wrong. I went to a village on teaching practice, and I told them that, look, I'm a teacher, because you're going in and out of the classroom without order. As a teacher, I have to, you know, they have to ask me to go out of the classroom. It's a village, a typical rural setting, a typical Fulani setting. So I, I asked the class, do you understand that before you go out, you have to ask me as the teacher? So what would you think? Everybody will obey, isn't it? Yep. But to my surprise, a girl said, okay, ma, when the teacher wants to go out, who will the teacher ask? So she was being... I was shocked because yeah. I was not prepared for that, for that question. Yes. So if you think you know everything and you are not learning, then you are wrong. Right. Because I had to now sit down, okay, how do I go about it? Unfortunately for me, or fortunately, my supervisor was there who did not understand the full food language, but asked me to translate. And I had to tell him, Frank, frankly, that this is what the girl asked. asked. And he said, okay, how are you going to answer her? I said, I don't have an answer, actually. Right. So he, he was very happy. He now started with me. He said, okay, tell her, uh, you know, teach her the, the issue of family unit. She has a father at home. She has a mother at home. Ask her if she has elder brother or elder sister mm. so that, you know, the you principle of leadership, the, yep. you know, you can, you know, take her from the known to the unknown. No, no. Now she's in the unknown place. That's why she's asking you, who will the teacher ask? So that was my lesson for the day. And I went back, you know. So, said, but these days, not many teachers are like that. Yeah. I mean, they are probably not well trained. Mm -hmm. The system is kind of collapsing on our heads. Mm. So the supervisor you are talking about mm. maybe may not necessarily be there. Which well, actually, I, I, I do not believe they are not trained because we have federal colleges of education. We have state colleges of education that are churning out, you know, thousands of teachers. And when you go there and see for yourself, I have seen that the teachers are well-trained. But, but, but there are these dubious concepts of let my people go. That mm. is in schools, especially the tertiary mm. uh, institutions, mm. whereby people have not merited to be passed, mm. but then because majority are and serious mm. teachers are like forced to say okay let them just pass to the next stage so that is why this you is hear of instances of people who are trained as teachers who mm. cannot teach or mm. lawyers who can't well, do well or scientists or other areas. I have been hearing areas. this for long but let me tell you let me assure you that our colleges of education they are really trying. I have not seen any teacher that has been graduated without going for teaching practice at least twice. I have not seen any. And I know the courses they take. But why, you know? why, why, why then is it possible? Mm. Because we hear, mm. we hear from schools, we hear of situations, especially in the north, yeah. where the quality has fallen mm. so badly. Yeah. I've had instances of where people writing WAEC, they are answer, the answers are written on the board, mm -hmm. but they cannot even copy even them copy. correctly. It does happen. I agree with you. It does happen, actually. But uh, uh, you cannot condemn the entire, you know, system because of those ones you have seen. Actually, you can, you can find still better graduates, you know, that give you the right answers, that when you go into the classroom with them, you will see they are ready to learn too. And they are also impacting knowledge. So are you saying that there isn't this big problem of the standard, as the standard of education, especially in the north, mm. uh, whereby you see people have graduated from secondary schools, they could barely write their names correctly without combining uh, small and big letters in the same Thank place? Thank you very much. Are you sure they have the teachers in the schools? I've been to a primary school where the headmaster is the headmaster, he's the teacher, he's the IRK teacher. It's a one-man show. And the school is graduating pupils. So what do you expect the pupils to come out with? Well, maybe the teacher is not well 
maybe can, experience and such because I remember reading yeah. about the earlier period. Mm -hmm. I've seen uh, experiences of those who went to school in the 50s yeah. and some of them are saying it is one person who is everything, who is teaching them different subjects and they come out speaking English like Tapao yeah, Balewa. Because the population wasn't as much as it is today. I agree with that person. The population today is, is, is beyond your imagination. Go to our schools and see classrooms that are almost 200 people, that have 200 people sitting. Why is it the so? Window, so? Thank you very much. Thank you very much. So if, if you find these people there in the classroom then, so you begin to now ask questions. So are we not ready for the population? Yes, we are not ready for the population explosion. So in those days, all of us went to you know, public schools. We didn't have to go to private schools, you know, but the population was under control. And so everything, the headmaster was there, he would supervise from morning till evening, you know, till the end of the day. And the teachers were teaching. Now there's a population explosion. The schools are no longer, you know, what you know, used, they used to be because the infrastructure, there is an infrastructural deficit and there are no teachers. Yes, some teachers. people say that actually we have so much emphasis on infrastructure, on yeah. school buildings, mm -hmm. but that the real foundation is the mm -hmm. teachers. If you have teachers who are good, mm -hmm. they can teach under trees, of course, and then of their, course. their products we, will of be good. Course. I'm sure me and you learned under the trees. We learned our every city under the tree, of course. But now as it is, there are no teachers in those schools. Go to our room. The teachers are solely in the headquarters. That's where you see them. The population, they overpopulate the schools in the cities while the villages, you know, uh, don't have teachers. But why is it that you go to states mm. and you see the education commissioner, the education officials, the graphs in their offices will always show you the intake, the so many thousands mm -hmm. who are in schools, and yet, just as you said, mm -hmm. go outside the capital and no, it's a different no, story. That is it. That is it. There are no teachers in the villages. There are no teachers. And that is one of our challenges. Because the population is not just in the cities, it is also in the villages. But you so, are in position of authority. You yeah. are once the minister of mm -hmm, state mm -hmm. in charge of education. Yeah. This problem didn't start now. What did you do when you were on that seat? Well, constitutionally, education is on the concurrent list, where basic education is solely the responsibility of states and local governments. The federal government only contributes 2% of her consolidated revenue to the states in terms of the universal education fund to, to help in basic education. So uh, there you are. So it's only the tertiary education that the federal government, you know, has control over the federal, you know, polytechnics, universities, and colleges of education. But what about you, Beck, the Universal Basic yeah. Education Commission, yeah. which is a federal institution mm -hmm. that helps the states and the local authorities on that basic education? Thank you. You, Beck, as I said, is the commission responsible for the disbursement of the 2% of the federal government's contribution to basic education. And that's why the states have state universal basic education. That is to make sure that those funds, you know, are spent in the right, you know, way, whereby they are giving guidelines by UBEC for them to follow in the implementation, you know, of basic education. But is UBEC following up? Because we often hear of states, and especially in the north, yeah. who are not even accessing these funds from UBEC yeah. uh, for whatever reasons. Mm -hmm. Why is that so? Isn't the UBEC mm. following up to ensure that these monies are spent on what they are meant to be spent well, and not to be like used for political no, purposes is, is often the, the case. States have no right to spend the, a couple from UBEC outside basic education. However, UBEC cannot force the states to contribute their own. They contribute also the same amount that is given to them by UBEC. And the law says once the state does not contribute, UBEC cannot release the funds. So that's why the funds are lying 
in the CBN. I think on that note, we will go for a short break yeah. and resume the conversation afterwards. Welcome back. It is still 30 minutes, the interactive program of Trust Television. Our guest today is Hajia Aisha Tujibril Duku. Hajia, we are talking about uh, the state of education, which is very close to your heart. I mean, being a teacher, an education administrator, former minister of education. So where do we go from here, especially in northern Nigeria, where the statistics are not looking good, even in basic education? They, they are saying over 10 million out of school mm. children. Mm. So what do we do? Thank you very much uh, for this question. Uh, number one, let me see. All of us have not faced the reality of the situation. As I said, we have not taken note of the population, you know, that is exploding. And uh, of course, we have not also looked at the law that says every child must be given free and compulsory basic education. How do we take care of the issue of exploding population? Because as you know, it's taboo mm -hmm. to even contemplate talking about whether it is limiting the number, mm -hmm. because as it is, Nigeria is overtaking many countries, mm -hmm. which is projected that by a certain year, Nigeria will even be the third most populated country in the world. Mm. And then everything else is in the wrong side. Mm. So, and we, we, we can't seem to address this issue to caution about the explosion or to plan for it. Yeah. What can we so do? That is why I said we have, we have failed to face the reality of the situation. The reality of the situation is you as a father, can you cater for 10 children? If you cannot cater for 10 children, then how are you going to, you know, because you are answerable not only to, to the children, but to Allah. He said, Kullukum ra'i. You are all, we are all what? We are supposed to be shepherds. shepherds. So are, we, are you ready to, to answer questions on those children you have brought? You know, you, you become, you know, uh, 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 an do you want to become an irresponsible father? But some will counter then, and say that, look, well, yes. you are supposed to so marry that's, and generate and have numbers. Thank you. That's why numbers. the first thing of reality is number one. Now, the government that is saying free and compulsory universal basic education, how free is basic education? Now, how can you say it is free when you are asking the father to buy the uniform, to buy the shoes, to buy the socks, to feed the child? You know, to but isn't that, isn't that part of the parent's responsibility? Because Very sometimes good. some people argue yeah. that unless there is some value attached, unless mm -hmm. you are spending part of your money, mm -hmm. you won't value maybe what you are getting. So that is why you have to make the parents realize that, look, the government will do her part, and you as a parent you must also do your part. Then your part is you must make sure that child is fed, you must make sure that child has uniform. You must make sure that child is in school so that it is not only, you know, going to school today until next week, Monday, before you go to school. No, you must go to school, remain in school, and graduate from school. So it is your responsibility as a father or as a mother to make sure your child goes to school. And if you do not do that, there must be what? Punishment and sanctions. So the law is not addressing that because the law says, now as it is, that if a parent refuses to send his or her child to school, you know, the parent will be taken to court and uh, the parent will pay an amount of 2,000 naira. But the courts, like are, the, the courts are clogged <laughs> and I don't think the police that are contending with bigger issues of insecurity so will be father, I if mean, father following want, up on He can pay 2,000 naira like 100 times, you know if he doesn't want the child to go to school. What about the government? Is there something the government is not doing, especially the states and local authorities? Of course, we have just mentioned that so many states have not assessed their UBEC funds. This is a gift from the federal government. Just but they take, don't want to take it. Yes, take, just bring your own counterpart fund, fund and put it there. And let me show you how you're going to spend it in training of teachers, in, 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 in supply of instructional materials, in, in even the construction. 
you have you back buildings so what is wrong in in that just for you to bring your own counterpart fund it has become an issue so billions of naira just lying in the cbn and meanwhile the, the, and meanwhile the and problem meanwhile, our is children especially in northern nigeria are you know littering the streets and the problem is not just at the basic education level as we speak the academic staff union of universities has been on strike mm. and the government of your own party appears mm. to be unconcerned as maybe the most charitable thing to say they've been engaging mm. but it hasn't brought results they have just gone on indefinite strike yeah. how bad is that for nigeria's no, education it is future? very very sad it is very very sad and unfortunate and you know, when two elephants fight, it is the grass that suffers. It is our students, our children that are suffering, you know, that are at home, you know. And uh, going into so many, you know, you know, an idle mind, is a, they say, is a devil's workshop. So it is an unfortunate situation. And that is coming back to still my earlier position of not facing reality. And what is the reality in this situation? Of course. There must be a solution. We cannot continue this way. We cannot continue keeping our children at home and then the two giant elephants continue to fight. They must come back to the table and agree. But where you are now, the National uh, I mean, Assembly, yeah. appear to be complicating matters oh. because you are always increasing the number of universities, the number of polytechnics and all of that. It has become like a me too project mm -hmm. while the existing ones are facing the problems they are facing which is why the teachers are on strike why 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 this pension for a university in every local government so to say courtesy of you uh, the legislators without any thought to the cost of maintaining them well there is nothing wrong in establishing this universities polytechnics and colleges of education even when you cannot, not, you cannot look, cater for the okay, existing ones. Whose child would you deny access to tertiary education? Who's no, but, child? but the other, but I mean, just a short while ago, mm -hmm. you were saying that why bring 10 children mm -hmm. when you cannot cater for them? So why exactly. bring more universities when you cannot cater for the existing ones? But you know that when JAM conducts examination now, JAM, you know, does not take even a quarter of those that want to go to in higher, higher institutions. A quarter of them that, that sat for the exams. So whose child would you deny education? All these children that you know sit for jam, they want to go to higher institution. And yet it's like a funnel, you know, as it goes up, you know, it it, it narrows the, the, the entry, you know, it's, it's not uh, the, 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 the universities, the colleges of education, they are they, they, they are not there for them. But they, they, are, they, they, are, they are full, you know, to capacity. There is also the counter conversation that it's not everybody that must go to university. Even in the Western world, in the more advanced world, mm -hmm. just a fraction of the society mm -hmm. end up going to universities. But here we value certificates, mm -hmm. masters, mm -hmm. PhDs, mm -hmm. and what have you, even if they are not as qualitative as they should be. Mm -hmm. So why, why, why that fixation? Why, why don't we have the conversation about maybe changing the narrative mm -hmm. and saying that not everybody maybe have to go to universities. Yeah. Some can go to vocational mm -hmm. institutions where, I mean, they can learn skills mm -hmm. and be able to earn a living. I totally agree with you. But in that case, even learning the skills, you have to go to an institution to learn the skill. So, yes, we need, of course, you know, we need, you know, you know, uh, skill acquisition is one of the basic needs that we, we must you know, care tough because to develop as a country, we need skills. You know, the best masons, you know, the best tilers are from our neighboring countries. Exactly. They are they not are. from Nigeria. Yes. So we, so need, isn't that so we need the polytechnics to train them, even if it is a diploma or a certificate. We need the polytechnics to train them. We need the vocational institutions to train them. So it's a matter of looking at the curriculum now, you know, in such a way that, you know, the the institutions now will will of course exam is set examination for these children let them let each child you know go to where 
he or she belongs and can learn something to earn a living. They are ready. We should even thank God that the children are even ready to go to school. Go to other countries. They are not willing to go to school. Our own children, I'm happy. I say Alhamdulillah every day. Because if you see in the morning you come out, you see the number of children on the street going to school. You, you, you know, and parents taking their children. To I, I, I must commend parents, you know. But people are want people are you know want their children to go to school and the children are willing. Let us you know grab the opportunity, you know because so time will come when they will not want to go to school because of these issues of this strike. Ex and also after, in addition to the strike, yeah. the opportunity of getting employment and mm -hmm. all of that mm -hmm. because the economy is contracting. Mm -hmm. So do we go back to still where you currently are the chair of the electoral committee? You've added another. You want to add another institution, again, another commission. Yeah. Why do we ha need a commission just to deal with electoral offenses? offenses. Yeah. I mean, another set of DG, mm -hmm. directors, mm -hmm. and all this fat cut earning big salaries, mm -hmm. while maybe at the end of the day, very little will change in terms of punishing those who have done something wrong during elections. Why not go through existing system, use the police and uh, no, no, other no, 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 means? No, 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 no. no. I, I totally disagree with you. We need to establish the Electoral Offences Commission. The, ca the cases of impunity, the case of impunity in Nigeria is just too much. And we cannot afford to go through normal, regular courts to treat, you know, uh, uh, electoral offenders. We need a specialized commission to do that expeditiously. And that will because be gulfing billions as no, well it, and delivering no, very little results. Is, like all is, the commissions we no, have, it so is many of them. worth it because... If we want our democracy, you know, to, strength, to be strengthened, if we want, you know, to conduct free, fair, and credible election, we need to punish offenders immediately. As they commit offense, we punish them immediately, and we need to bring back everybody's sense, you know, back. Because as it is now, I'm, I'm But sorry. you don't need a commission. We need you, a commission. You don't need a whole set of civil servants earning millions, we need, we doing need. very little, and then no, not getting the result. No, is because you are sitting here in, uh, you know, Trust TV. You need to go out. I am a politician. You need to see the offenses that are committed. But isn't, that, uh, it, isn't it because of the breakdown of our judicial system whereby cases drag on? Why don't you fix that problem mm. instead of another commission? No, 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 no. We need an electoral offenses commission to strengthen our democracy as a giant of Africa. Other countries have set their own long time ago. You know, Malaysia 68 years ago. You know, the, the Philippines uh, um, uh, 15 years ago. You know, Nepal. Kenya, you know, we, we, we cannot afford, you know, to allow electoral offenders just to, you know, to have their way, business as usual. No, 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 no. We need to punish electoral offenders immediately. And, and they must, the there end. must be this commission there of must yours. Be this commission. And it's, this is not the first time we are talking about this commission. Remember the Justice Muhammad West Commission, yes. also the, the Innamani Commission. Oh, this but, but also oh, remember the, the Orosanya oh, panel, the Orosanya panel that suggested a reduction mm -hmm. of all these parastatus and it was when you were even minister that yeah. this panel mm -hmm. were there and to this day yeah. we haven't managed to reduce the number mm -hmm. we are only adding more you know like mm -hmm. that house are saying of mm -hmm. that's the mad woman lord <laughs> she couldn't put it on her head yeah, she added more added exactly no, but honestly sincerely we need the electoral offenses commission to strengthen our democracy and you know to bring back you know, sanity into our electoral system. You, you, you have seen what has happened in the, the Oshun Ekiti, in our primary election. You have seen what has happened. You know? Thank you very much, uh, Hajia Aisha to Jibril Duku for the very passionate I'm defense. Forgotten. I'm also the Gimbir Duku. Okay, and yes. Gimbir Duku. Yes. Very good. I, yes. Probably you are appearing <laughs> in the Gimbir's regalia. Yes. So thank you very much for <laughs> coming to uh, this program of Trust Television. Thanks. Thank you. We've come to the end of this edition of 30 Minutes. Keep a date with us.